Hey everybody, today Rado talks through the new second edition of Martin Wallace's London, which is one of my favorite engine builders and one of my favorite card games of all time. London is absolutely phenomenal. It's also one of my most played games of all time. And I'm gonna spend a few minutes today walking you through what's new and changed in this second edition. Now, I'm already assuming you know how to play London, you're familiar with it, and you just wanna know what's new Magoo in the box. If you want to learn London itself, you can go ahead and hit that I in the top right corner of the screen to go watch my run through of the original first edition because the core game has not changed from this box to this box you're still building up london after the great fire of 1666 up to modern day by using multi-use cards and a central market and uh, fighting poverty every step of the way the core game hasn't changed but there are several subtle and one very significant change which is going to be in this new box let's go on ahead and open it up and right off the bat i just have to say i love the very austere and regal presentation of this new game as well including the fact that it's not a standard box it's more it opens like a book nice subtle little detail but very very good of course uh, new rules pretty much the same here's the biggest change the single biggest reimagining of this game is the fact that our board no longer has a map. The map of London is gone. And that means all the spatial gameplay of, you know, building into this region. Now that's been, Burrow's been built up. Now we can build it here, 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 and slowly expand south across the River Thames and all that. All of that is gone. Instead of having a map that we expand on, there are a bunch of Burrow cards. And at any given time in the game, there are three of them out on display. So players can still buy Burrow cards, but they are grabbing ones that are available. And as soon as somebody um, you know, develops uh, Islington, a new one comes out. Oh, and then there's Paddington Station, and so on. Now, the, the, they still have the notion of being north or south of the river. You can see the north and the south. And they also have the notion of being on the river or not. So some of the cards that really took into account, whether you're on the river, like you know the, the fire brigade and all that, those things still work fine. Although there are a few cards whose functionality has changed pretty significantly because of this changing, removing the map and having individuals uh, like Omnibus and Underground and maybe a couple other ones change differently, but I'll get to the specifics of how these cards changed at the end of the run-through. But suffice to say, the map is gone, and now at any given time, there's just a, a few places you can build. You, you still build for the same purposes. You spend money to be able to get more cards, get victory points, and now this is new and different. Clear out some of your poverty. The probably most impactful change to the way the game plays on a high level is poverty. Poverty is a, and paupers are a bigger deal than they used to be. Because before it used to be the more boroughs you have, when you run your city or your section of the city and you generate poverty, every borough you have reduces the amount of poverty. Now, it doesn't matter how many boroughs you've gotten. Um, you know, they, they don't have any kind of cumulative effect like that. It's when you first um, build up, develop the borough, you get an instant reduction in poverty right then, and then that's it. So, this kind of really puts a, a uh, hamper on the kind of get loans early and just get a whole bunch of boroughs so you never have to worry about poverty. That kind of strategy that some people say is actually kind of broken and whatnot, this pretty much eliminates that because you can't you you get the poverty benefits of boroughs only once when you first get them and that's like i said a pretty big change and in a small way too uh, it's interesting you know here's a you know here's here's the poverty they come in cubes discs and then like little 15ers if you get that much poverty because of course you'll generate a lot of poverty in this game also we don't have victory point ships instead we've got little markers and we keep victory uh, keep track of everybody's score on a public track that everybody can see so that's a little bit different but um there's an interesting thing at the beginning of the original game Everybody started with five poverty, so you could be trying to fight poverty right from the get-go. In the new edition, nobody has any poverty at the beginning of the game. So, that's another thing that kind of disincentivizes, let's see, actually, because you're always going to have the first three places to build, just like in the original game. Everybody has to start 
on the specials. Should have gotten those out ahead of time. Um, you know, uh, Suffolk and the city and Westminster. So these are still the same. And the thing is, while in the regular original game, you might get, take a loan immediately so you can get Westminster immediately or, or the city immediately and start building, now you're less inclined to do that because at the beginning of the game, you don't have any poverty yet. So if your very first turn, you get a loan and invest in the city, you'll be wasting this one opportunity that the city gives you to uh, eliminate poverty. So that kind of slows the roll on the borough building strategy again. Uh, you know, and, and again, these are subtle changes, but they do have an impact on the overall feel of the game. Never mind the fact, of course, that you know there's a major impact that there is no spatial stuff. You don't have to, you know, because once somebody gets the city, and the next thing that comes up is, oh, I don't know, Lambeth. You know, those two weren't necessarily even connected at all. It's just these are the things that are always available to buy, which gives you more cards, gives you victory points, and a one-time opportunity to clear up poverty. But we're not done yet. You may have noticed these uh, areas also have another function. Now, some of them, not all of them, have special abilities. That if you invest in, in Lambeth or Westminster or whatnot, as long as this is your active borough, at the start of every turn, instead of you know, drawing one like normal, you can draw a zero, one, or two. And you may remember, that's a special power that used to be on one of the cards you can build. Now, it has been transcribed onto Westminster itself. And the way the game works is, you know, if I get the eight bucks or pounds and I invest in Westminster, I go on ahead and take this, I, I get the two, bu or the two cards, the four points, and I get rid of two poverty, if I've got any at the moment. And what happens is, I now have this special ability, and whenever I run the city, I make one extra dollar. So this is adding to my benefits of running the city as well. If I add Paddington Station, it clears out a little bit. Just you know, so this one actually does function like normal, where this does reduce poverty by one. But um, you know, uh, something over here, it actually increases your poverty every time you run the city. Because if I get this, hey, I've got this special power. You know, and a new one comes out. I've got that power until I eventually invest in more. And then the new one comes over here, covers up the old one. I've lost that old power. And hey, I've replaced it with Paddington. I don't have a special power anymore. Although I do effectively have a power of reducing the poverty when I run the city. And then, you know, that makes uh, uh, Lewisham come out. And if I invest in that later on, boom, a big drop in poverty. And I still don't have a power. And now you can see I've got two north and one south. One's on the river. And then Battersea comes out. And, you know, say I get Lambeth later on. And boom, now I've got a special power again until I eventually get another borough. And this is really interesting. This didn't exist in the original game. You got the boroughs, and you were pretty much done thinking about them. Now there's a lot more decision making that goes into once I've got a borough and I've got one of these powers that used to be the function of a building like schools or something like that. Um, like yeah, for instance, Lambeth does have the school ability, I believe. Uh, whenever you discard a card, pay one to treat that card as another color. That used to be something you did with schools. Now you do it if you have Lambeth, which means you don't want to get another borough and make that go away until you've gotten use out of this. So it really, again, these are subtle changes, but it does create more interesting tension in the decisions you make about when you're going to get more boroughs because you're radically changing your landscape. Whereas before, it was just giving you more cards and more points points and letting you fight poverty better. So this is a significant change. The, the fact that we don't have a map, instead we just have these little things that come out. And for my money, it's definitely a change for the better. It gives you more interesting decisions to make because you don't necessarily want to give up the special powers you've earned, but you do need to, now you have an influx of cash after running your city, you need a quick way to get more cards in your hand. Are you willing to do that to get rid of one power to get a different power, etc., etc.? So. That is a big deal, and it has some small impacts. Like I said, we don't start with any poverty now. Also, there are, I think, if I recall correctly, like six or seven fewer cards in this game than there were in the original, because like there are no schools in the A, B, or C deck. Schools functions have been added onto regions. So that's another thing as well. You know, in the original game, you could get a school and you could put it in your one of your stacks, and you could leave it there for half the game. So you always had its power, um, which just means you're creating more poverty yourself by never, you know putting anything else on there, but it gives you that flexibility. Now, you only have that flexibility as long as you keep a borough on top, because schools are gone, the workhouses are gone, there's a few others that are gone. And I should say, um, on the whole, while there's a few less cards, uh, a few cards have actually changed name, and some, one, I think, has actually changed color. There's been a few changes like that. For the most part, the cards all function exactly the same. Just 
Uh, some cards that used to be in the B or in the A deck now, some that are in the A or in the C, uh, some don't exist anymore because their powers have been moved on to Burrows, and uh, you know, a few little tweaks like that. At the end of this run through, I'll go through every single card for diehard fans who want to know everything that's changed. But is there anything else that's changed? Oh, one other not insignificant thing has changed. Now, the way the game works is, of course, hey, if I want to put the Alms House into my particular region, then I gotta I gotta discard something like you know, of a matching color, like Covet Garden or what have you. And you know, in the I in the original game, you start discarding and you fill up the top row, and then as you keep, as players keep discarding stuff, the bottom row fills up. And now, in the original game, after they were all full, and you, and somebody wanted to discard again, the top row would go away, the bottom row would slide up, and then uh, you'd start filling up the bottom row again. So the longer something sticks around, the more likely it is to go away. That's been changed now. If you know, the, uh, the, the common market is full, and I want to discard, I wouldn't discard the Great Fire Monument, but say I did, um, to, instead of the top going away, the older stuff going away, the more recent stuff goes away. Um, you know, and then if, if we fill up, the more recent stuff goes away again. And this stuff has a tendency to stay around a lot longer. And it was interesting, it's a really, Again, it's a subtle but not insignificant change to the game, the play of the game. And I asked the developers, why did you make that change? Because uh, it's really interesting. And what they were going for, uh, yeah. what they were going for, they basically told me, was they liked the idea that the fact that it's the newer cards that are going to disappear more likely than the older cards, that can, if you have a card that you want to get out of the game because it doesn't do you any good, but you don't want your opponents to get it either because it'll be really, really good for them, and that would be bad news. Uh, it used to be, if you're trying to get rid of a card, oh, you'll come out here, it'll stick around forever. It'll eventually slide up to the top, and then it'll eventually disappear. It was harder to get rid of them. But now, now, it's the newer cards that get sloughed out more often, and that means it, it, it um, adds a, a more of a tactical option for trying to jettison cards from the game faster, because you know, as soon as this comes out, they're more likely to not stick around as long. So again, a subtle change, but it really does add more depth to the overall experience. Now, denial strategies are stronger than they used to be because we're discarding the bottom row instead of the top row. Although I suppose if you don't like that rule, you could just forget about it and still just jettison the top row like the original game. Heck, you can even still start with five poverty, although I wouldn't suggest that because I do think it's very, very cool to kind of, again, put the brakes on an early burrow strategy. I mean, you still can. You can get burrows right off the bat. You're just wasting some of their potential. I think that's actually very, very cool. So, that's pretty much it, folks. Um, uh, uh, you know, this second uh, edition, there's tweaks to some cards. Some cards have been removed. The map has been radically altered, and there's been some changes to uh, some minor changes to the game structure. But the core game is still the same. The more you know, whoever has the most poverty uh, is the one who suffers compared, to, but relative to everybody else. Um, you know, money is worth points at the end of the game, and that same flow of build your city up, run it. That gives you a lot of money, so you can get a new region that gives you more cards, and you can just keep on repeating that engine still works great, still fighting poverty and all the rest of it. London is still a phenomenal game. It's still one of my favorite card games of all time, still one of my favorite engine building games of all time. And for my money, I'd say it's even better now with these particular new additions that have been added. And so that's it, folks. That's all I've got to say about London's second edition. Oh, shoot, I forgot. One more subtle but important change in the new second edition has to do with loans. Um, you know, and uh, you know, they still function the same. You take a $10 loan, uh, you got to pay it off before the end of the game at 15 or you lose points. By the way, here's what the new pounds look like. So much nicer than the disc that came with the original. But here's the deal. Every loan you have when you run your city creates an additional poverty. So, this is another example of how in London 2nd Edition, poverty is a much more sticky wicket, a much more pressing concern for you to worry about during gameplay, about London 2nd Edition. Uh, I'm so happy with it. My first edition, my most beloved here, has finally gone on the auction block. I won't be seeing it much longer because in the future, this is going to be the London for me. And that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye. Okay, are you still here? That means you are a diehard London fan, and here's what I'm going to do for you. Let's move this out of the way. Let's go on ahead and or just zoom in really close. Because I'm sure some people want to see. Well, I want to know particularly what happened to the omnibus. What happened to um, you know uh, the underground and stuff like that. I am just, I'm not going to, I'm going to do this without comment. 
I'm just going to show you all the cards through the A, then the B, then the C deck. You can pause and look at them. Not only will you be able to see what differences there are, like I said, I, I know of at least one card whose color has changed. Some cards, like Leatherworks, are now an A deck instead of a B deck. There's little squeaks like that. You can see those. Uh, also, you can appreciate the new art. In some cases, the art is the same as what was on the original card. It's just now the the graphic design of the cards is so much nicer. It goes right up to the edge. The, the images pop more. They zoom in more. You can appreciate the artistry more. Um, and in some cases, there is completely new art. Uh, done from scratch, uh, which also look really, really lovely. I mean, the game is just wonderful to behold. It was always a good looking game, but now it is a beautiful, beautiful looking game. And I'm just going to keep on going through the A's. I think I, for the most part, have them in alphabetical order. Again, feel free to pause if you want to um, you know, compare and contrast function, prices. Uh, you know, like here's the leather. Again, this was, a, this was a B industry before. Now it's an A industry, so it's a, you know, a supplement to money that much earlier. Uh, poppers still work exactly the same. The interesting thing about poppers is they are harder to get rid of now because you just can't keep a school around forever or a workhouse around forever because those things are just gone. So um, being able to deal with your problems I, you know, the game just becomes a more challenging puzzle to solve. What is the best move to make every round? And Waterworks and War, and the finally good old Ren. Those, act, those three action cards are still in here. So those are the A's. Let's move on to the B's. Uh, Albert Doc. Brewing. Okay. And again, I think I'm running out of stuff to say. Again, for the most part, these things have not really changed that much. Well, hopefully this is of use or interest. Uh, if people want to like, download, I know there's a full card list of the original game. You can download and compress and compare what's changed. Oh, now this is interesting. Clockmakers. I think, if I, I believe this is a replacement for watchmakers. They used to be watchmakers in the base game. Now they're clockmakers. And I think the money has changed. I think it used to be six. Now it's seven. You'd have to go check the original card to double check that. I could be wrong. But Fiber Great, you know, it still works the same uh, because players are still worrying about being on the, on, on the water or not. A cemetery, another hospital, and a hospital. Kew Garden, Lloyd's, prison. Nelson's column. Oh, Omnibus. Now, this has changed quite a bit. Um, and I think for the better. A lot of people are felt that in the original game, the Omnibus was totally broken. And it needed a rata to fix it. It is now a significantly weaker card. You can see for yourself what it is right there. Since the map has changed functionality, this has changed functionality. And if anything, the cool thing about it is it's become a more interactive card where you really care more about what your opponents are doing once you've got an Omnibus in play. It acts more like a shop, really in the way the shops work and continue to work. There's our poppers, here's the coppers, uh, Regent Street, uh, Victoria Dock, ship building, shops, continue to function the same, steamboats, um, again, you know, you can have Riverside boroughs or not, because they have that little river symbol on them. Street lights, still a city's best friend to cut down on poverty and crime. Townhouses, University of London. Oh, and here's another one. I forget what these used to be, but now they are upholders. Again, they're just one of the mid-game money makers. Same with turners. These used to be something else. Maybe they were furniture makers. I don't really remember, but they're now turners instead. West India Docks and the worker houses. And finally, we get on towards the end of the game. And you may have noticed, um, no schools. That's because they're all in the uh, locations. Albert Hall, Billingsgate. And again, I mean, uh, functionality aside, the uh, you know the the presentation is just wonderful. It's just so delightful. the The card quality is really, really sharp too. I don't know much about linen count, but I just know they feel they're they're nice. They have a good feeling. They're good and stiff, um, but still shuffleable. And sewers, 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 sewers. Lots of sewers. The same number of sewers as used to be. Shops still the same. All righty. Uh, train north and south, two north and a south, just like before. Uh, and now, so the other big, big change, of course, is the underground. Um, since there are no longer specific spaces you grab that are underground. Um, so instead, it just gives you kind of a different building strategy to pursue if you're trying to go for a late game underground rush. And finally, Whitehall. So that was it. And now, let's just go on ahead and show you all the regions, although I don't have them in order, but just so you can see, because they're lovely. Um, and again, you can see, let me go ahead and zoom in a bit more so you'll be able to more easily read what their special powers are. 
All right. And again, they, I, don't, I believe all the special powers of these have been cribbed from, the, from cards in the original game, and those cards are out, um, which again, just makes... I, 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 again, I cannot stress how much I love this new approach to land. For my money, I mean, the map was fine, but it was never that great. It was always kind of the least interesting part of the original game that you had this spatial thing of trying to figure out where to build and expand. Um, this has all the interesting decisions about being on the water or being north or south without you know, the extra weight, plus a smaller table footprint, plus the really cool thing of more interesting decisions because of the special powers and, again, the overall weakening of them, um, which makes... Poverty, much more difficult to deal with because they only fight poverty once. There you go, folks. That was the whole Megillah London 2nd Edition from Osprey Games and designer Martin Wallace. Thanks for watching. Have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.